In our research, we are um, interested in understanding of how can we bring machine learning and other intelligent algorithms onto physical machines. Um, so for example, an autonomous vehicle um, or a robot. So what we do is machine learning for machines. My name is Sebastian Trimpe. I'm a Max Planck Research Group Leader um, at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Stuttgart and I lead the Max Planck and Cyber Valley Research Group on Intelligent Control Systems. And what we find um, is that when we do this, when we bring the machine learning algorithms on, on the real system, that there are some fundamental questions that, that need to be solved. So for example, how can a robot um, learn um, while being sa safe at the same time? Or how can we learn from real world data where we cannot arbitrarily generate data as we can in, on a computer, but we need to respect the physics. So in a nutshell, my research is about um, tailoring machine learning methods in order to make the robot speed up the learning process of uh, learning by repetition. Technically, this means that essentially the robot um, tries a behavior for a few trials, a few iterations, and after these iterations, the robot has improved or learned a new behavior while before it knew nothing. And my research is about how to make a more efficient use of the data that we collect through the sensors to make the robot learn with less repetitions. So this is one main area of our research, learning learning for, for machines or what you call it learning-based control. Another uh, area of our interest is um, distributed intelligence. So when you have now multiple machines, multiple systems that um, exchange data over a network, that collaborate, that learn from each other. So the main goal of my research is to do uh, wireless control of uh, fast physical systems across large distances. So it means we have uh, multiple systems that need to exchange information with each other or with controllers for their own decision making. So we want to be uh, fast and reliable. The, the most important problem is the integration of the wireless communication and the control. And I think this is what makes our research special in some way because we have a very um, tight collaboration with the Technical University of Dresden and ETH Zurich and mainly focus on, on designing the wireless embedded system in such a way that it tames the imperfections of wireless networks to the extent possible and to make it as suitable as possible for control design. And then we here in, in Tübingen, we take these remaining properties um, of the wireless embedded system and then in the end, or we have a control design that is stable, that works in practice and where we also in theory can guarantee stability. We are not sending our information along predefined or pre-calculated routes, but we are flooding the whole network with it. This means that all information, every data package that is sent by one node will in the end be received by all others. And therefore, we can also solve distributed control tasks in a very straightforward manner. We can come up with a centralized design and then locally implement it on each node. The third main um, direction in our research uh, revolves, evolves around um, the question of resources, because we always have to deal with limited resources. So for example, if you have an embedded system that might be battery powered, the energy is a limited resource, or also computation. Or if you think about networks and many systems exchanging data over a network, um, you don't want all the systems to talk all the time, but only when they have something relevant to say. So these are the three areas, learning based um, or, or learning from machines, distributed intelligence and, um, and resources. Once you try to apply the things that you work on, also in practice, you will usually um, meet a lot of additional challenges that you didn't think about when you just did these things in, in, in theory. We are um, not driven by a particular application, so it's not that we want to solve a particular application, but we use applications to motivate our, our research. So I have team members who um, have a major in computer science, others in engineering, also mathematics. So this is, this is the intersection uh, where our research is, is, is based because we typically take a mathematical approach. So we start with modeling our problem from a mathematical point of view, then do, do analysis, also try to prove things. We develop new algorithms, um, new methods, uh, and then we bring them on the, on the, on the physical machines. So we, we need all these disciplines. We need mathematics, we need uh, uh, computer science, and we need engineering. And this is what we bridge in, in my group. If we in the future want to have robots living among ourselves, it is desired to have these methods that allow to learn efficiently from data, as the robot will always need to adapt to new unforeseen environments. The typical example for this is if you program a robot to chop onions with a specific knife and for a specific onion, 
the moment you change the knife or the onion, it won't be able to do it anymore as good as it was doing it before uh, because it needs to adapt to these new objects. Humans are very good at this and the kind of work that I am doing is precisely about how to also add this component of adaptability to robotics. I'm very interested in building fundamental understanding of what does it take when you combine machine learning um, and the real systems, the, the, the physical world. And I was saying we have some fundamental questions to be solved and it would be great if we, we were known for having solved some of these fundamental questions.